Hello friends, welcome back to another session of WebLogic Server. In this session, we are going to discuss about LDAP Server and specifically to WebLogic Embedded LDAP Server. So LDAP is defined as a lightweight directory access protocol. And if you do not have any idea about this one, then you can consider it as a software, okay, uh, which is used to store the identities. You can say about your username and passwords, okay. So whenever we log into our WebLogic Server from the admin console, Okay, then we enter our username and password and it get authenticated and then it allow us to go to the uh, inside console. Okay, so this user name and password, these are all called the identities. Okay, and it is stored somewhere in a uh, software which is called a LDAP. Okay, and sometimes it can be an external LDAP where you can store your identities in external LDAP server which you can integrate with the WebLogic server. Apart from that, if we have uh, not integrated your WebLogic with any external uh, LDAP server, okay, then in that case, WebLogic used its own default embedded LDAP server, okay, and on which it stores the, your identities and then other uh, security configurations in, uh, in certain files at your file system level inside your domain directory, okay. So we will discuss about all these things, what is exactly an embedded LDAP server, uh, when we talk about the export import of our identities from the default embedded server and if you wanted to to uh, to import all these identities in some different web logic domain okay which can be required in multiple scenarios okay then or maybe sometimes your LDAP servers get corrupted then how you can again import it from the backup okay so we will discuss all about this all these things in this session okay so now first let us discuss about an embedded LDAP server okay so as i said each weblogic server instance contains an embedded ldap server and why this embedded ldap server because you have to maintain your username and identities right and the security configurations and security policies so all the security related information are stored in the ldap server and by default weblogic comes with the embedded ldap server which is already embedded with the weblogic installation okay so the default authentication authorization role mapper and credential mapper providers that are installed with weblogic store their data in ldap server so all the, that means all the security information when we talk about the authentication of users authorization of users you know, different kind of roles and groups and then a lot of other credential mappers are there right so all this information is stored in the embedded ldap server similarly if you have if you integrate your weblogic server with some external ldap server then all these informations are getting stored in the external LDAP server, okay? So the administ administration server contains the primary LDAP server, which is replicated on all managed servers. So we know that in WebLogic domain, we have admin server and then we have managed servers, right? So for all this uh, security information, when we talk about the embedded LDAP server, it is it has to be stored in each and every server. That means on each admin server and, and each managed server, okay? But admin server, because which is a central point of uh, for all the con complete domain and all for all of the managed servers. So admin server, LDAP configuration is called as a primary LDAP server configuration, which is get replicated in all the managed servers, right? Because we do all the changes from the admin console. So whenever we do all the, any, uh, whenever we create any user from the admin console, we change the password of any user. So we create any kind of a provider from the admin console. It get replicated from the primary LDAP server of admin server to the managed server LDAP servers. Okay, and if you are aware about this uh, WebLogic servers and, and some certain of experience on this one, then you will see the location inside your domain and inside the domain, you will have a server with folder with name servers. Inside that, you will see a folder with name admin server. So here in my case, my admin server name is just admin server. So I have mentioned admin server. You could have a different uh, admin server name. So you will see a folder with that name inside your servers. Okay. Similarly, you will see the different folders for your managed servers as well. And once you will go inside that one, you will see a folder with name data. And inside data, you will see another folder with name LDAP. So this LDAP directory is the embedded LDAP store of your WebLogic server, which store all the security informations with respect to your WebLogic server. Okay. And as I said, each WebLogic server will have this LDAP directory because it has to be in each for in each and every server whether it is admin server or managed server okay and it once you do any kind of a security configuration changes from the admin console it get replicated in all the ldap directories of the managed server that means from ldap folder of your admin server it will replicate to all the ldap folders of your managed servers okay and when we talk about the backup okay so this ldap directory will have some more files and and directories as well okay and inside that you will see a folder with name ldap files 
Okay, this LDAP file directory contains the data files for the LDAP servers. So you will have a multiple files there with respect to the embedded LDAP server. But when we talk about uh, the data files, okay, where exactly your data is get stored, it is inside your LDAP files folder, which is inside your LDAP directory. Okay, and this file is a directory. Uh, sorry, this file in this directory contains user group, group membership, policies, and role information. So all the user group information, whatever we have created from the WebLogic console, okay, it gets stored in this particular directory. Okay, and other subdirectories under the LDAP directory contain LDAP server messages, logs, and data about replicated LDAP server. So it has uh, some other functionalities as well. So it will store all other information apart from the logs inside the LDAP folder. Okay, so when you go inside the LDAP files, okay, you will see the certain number of files with the uh, name embed L embedded LDAP dot data delete index trend props or TW pos. Okay, these are the embedded LDAP files of your WebLogic server. Okay, now enable LDAP backup. Okay, now again okay, in that once we uh, installed our WebLogic server, so by default it enabled the backup of the configurations okay that means if by default it enable the backup of your all of the security data because it is a critical data which you has to be uh, take the backup okay uh, sometimes uh, based on the frequencies okay so by default when we talk about the web logic server it take the backup automatically once a day okay and which it is stored in the backup folder which will be you will see inside the LDAP folder okay so this is the same directory structure which I have explained in the previous slide. Inside that, they will see a back folder with name backup directory and inside backup, it will automatically store the uh, your uh, backup of your LDAP file. Okay, so once it will take the backup of the LDAP configurations, embedded LDAP configurations, this uh, it will create a zip file with the name embedded LDAP backup dot zip, which will be stored inside your backup folder. So there would be an LDAP folder, as I said, inside that you will see a folder with name backup and inside backup, it will store this zip file. So in case your LDAP server, your LDAP files are corrupted, then you can restore from this particular backup. Okay, and this is the configuration which you can see from the console, okay, how this, uh, what is the default configuration for taking the backup of your LDAP files. Okay, so when you go to your servers, your admin console, click on your domain. Inside your domain, you will click on security tab. Inside security, you can click on embedded LDAP server tab. Okay, inside that you can see the backup power, backup minute, and then backup copies. So how many copies it will retain of the backup? Seven copies it will retain. And backup minute would be uh, the minutes of the hour and backup hour is the hour of your time. Okay, so 23.5 is the default. As of now, you can see on the screen. Okay, and the total number of copies it will retain seven. Okay, so this will execute all the day at this particular time okay so if the embedded LDAP server files become corrupted or unusable the admin server will generate a number format exception if any time due to any due to any reasons your LDAP files get corrupted then in the logs you will see a number format exception and your server will not start in that case okay however this chance is very rare but sometimes it is happened okay most of the cases when your disk sometime our disk became full okay we are not aware about that when we try to start our admin server manage admin server multiple times right when your disk is full so at that time, you will see that your files get corrupted and you will see the number format exception, right? So in that case, you need to restore it from the backup, okay? So for that one, you have to first change to your directory where you have the backup, okay? So in case of uh, admin server, you will have a folder with name admin server inside server directory and inside the Julian, we have a folder with name data. Go inside data and rename the LDAP file to ldap.old. Okay, and after that, you have to reboot your admin server. So once you will reboot your admin server, it will automatically create a LDAP folder again. And okay, and then you can you can go to your backup. Uh, you can go to your backup folder. Okay, and then from that backup folder, you can restore your embedded zip file and then extract these files and then again restart your admin server. So it will reflect all the previous security configurations which was taken care by your WebLogic, or you can say about which was the backup taken backup taken by your WebLogic server. Earlier. Okay, this is the way how you can restore it from the uh, previous backup. Okay, and these are the files that I've explained in the previous slide as well. You will see this file inside your LDAP uh, <clears throat> zip file, which you are going to restore. Now, the another stuff is import and export embedded LDAP server. That means sometimes it happened that when we create a new domain, okay, or maybe when we do the upgrades, okay, out of place upgrade in some different <clears throat> host or machines, okay, then probably we need to import our all the export and import our uh, all the users and group and the settings, security settings that we have in the default realm of my primary domain to the secondary domain, okay? And it is not feasible because sometimes we have a lot of users in, in our 
uh, <clears throat> embedded server, okay, it's not feasible to recreate them again manually in the secondary domain. So in that case, it's a very easy option. You can export all the security users and groups and then all the informations in related to them in a file, and then you can import back them back in the new domain instead of creating all the use settings, users and passwords and groups again and again. Okay, and for that one, this is my source domain with name lab domain one. Here I have the user with name deployer, monitor, and operators. Okay, and if you see the screenshot of domain two, uh, there is no user with name deployer, monitor, operators. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I will import, I will export my users <clears throat> from uh, from the domain one, and then I will import in my domain two. So to take the export, you can go to your domain one and then click on security realms and the name of your my realm, my realm and then click on migration and then click on export tab inside that you can specify the export directory okay so just specify a directory or a, or, or a folder inside which you are going to export your all the security configurations or you can say about the embedded under configurations okay and if you want to override the previous configurations which we have taken some older export and you want to override that one just click on override tab as well okay and once you click on save okay it will export all the embedded data in five files which you can see on the screen with name dot that okay so for these files five files will be the default embedded store export files which contain all the security informations with respect to that particular domain and now to import that in second secondary domain go to domain two click on my security realms and then click on migration import tab and now again specify the same directory where you have exported the content so in my previous slide i have exported my content inside c colon drive so i'm giving the same if you have some different path then please specify this same okay after that click on save and it will export all the contents in your domain and then you go to my realm users and group then you can see that Deployers, monitor, and operator users are exported, uh, imported there, and you, it will all reflect there. Similarly, if you have more users, more groups, then you will see all the users and groups are reflecting there. This is how you can export and import the user credentials and details from a domain to secondary domain. So this is all about this embedded and depth report, and thanks for watching this video. And stay tuned for a uh, few more interesting videos. Okay.